Overpriced coffee at the movies, book smart, and that's it by David Shires Vitella. Names have been changed to maintain anonymity. Four star rating system, rewatchability rating system. The year after I graduated high school, Kevin and I went to the movie theater to watch Superbad. We were both Arrested Development fans and were happy to see Michael Sarah's career blossom. A few months earlier, we had watched Juno, a movie that was the complete opposite of what we were expecting. Juno featured both Michael Sarah and Jason Bateman. Jason Bateman is the lead in Arrested Development, and Michael Sarah plays his son. We were expecting to see Jason Bateman and Michael Cera in a few scenes together, maybe crack some jokes. We were expecting the movie to be similar in tone to Arrested Development. Boy, were we wrong. It was apparent that the movie was not going to be what we imagined the second we got to our auditorium. We walked into a full auditorium. That was the first clue. Not many people watched Arrested Development, and it was not likely that a movie sharing Arrested Development's humor would pull that large of a crowd. Speaking of the crowd, like us, they were all teenagers, not Arrested Development's demo, but they were all girls. In unison, we glanced at our ticket to make sure that we were at the right screening. We were. We took a seat in the middle of the auditorium and watched a movie about teenage pregnancy. A movie with what I could only describe as a bubble gum version of Arrested Development's humor. The movie wasn't really for us, so the second the movie ended, as any teenager would, we stormed out of the theater, bummed. Michael Cera and Jason Bateman didn't even share screen time. I think we both liked the movie, but, as I found to be common, liked it less and less after every viewing. Prior to Juno, I had watched a movie called Thank You for Smoking, a movie directed by Jason Reitman, a dark comedy about a tobacco lobbyist. At the time, one of my favorite movies, Jason Reitman also directed Juno. So with Jason Reitman directing and Michael Cera and Jason Bateman starring, I assumed the movie was made specifically for me. Jason Reitman went on to direct Up in the Air, starring George Clooney, a movie I liked, but it's no Thank You for Smoking. He kept working with Diablo Cody, writer of Juno, and I lost interest entirely. Listen, I am not about to pretend like Totes My Goats is something people have ever said, ironically or unironically. Come to think of it, I think I hate Juno. Because of the somewhat sour aftertaste Juno left, I was a little hesitant to watch another Michael Cera movie. I wasn't that aware of Jonah Hill. I had seen him in Grandma's Boy, and I remember him asking people to ask him about his wiener and accept it. But I had no real opinion about him. But Superbad was my sense of humor exactly. It was at the time. I've since watched it, and I'm glad to say some of the jokes aren't really my sense of humor anymore. I'm not putting it down, but if you don't change, then you're living wrong, man. I didn't relate to Superbad the way most people my age did. I rarely relate to kids in high school movies. I related to kids in Hey Arnold, but not really any high school movies. Maybe dazed and confused, but I wasn't a stoner in high school, nor was I a jock. But I did listen to a lot of classic rock and drove around aimlessly with my friends. Oddly enough, I'd argue that Third Rock from the Sun, the TV show, was a pop culture I related to the most. But I choose not to get into that right now. Booksmart was sold to me as the female super bad. When watching it, I could certainly see why. Beat for beat, it's pretty much the same movie. Jonah Hill's sister even plays a female version of Jonah Hill of the movie. But it's not the same movie. If I'm being honest, I wasn't even aware of Booksmart. I don't watch trailers as I've mentioned many times before. At this rate, I mention it as often as vegans mention that they're vegan. Which if I may say, oftentimes when you hang out with people, it's to go eat. So it makes sense that vegans would mention that they're vegan about 30% of the time that they mention it. The other 70% of the time, they are just reminding you that they are lonely. But when you're writing about movies, it makes sense that you talk about trailers. When I go to the movies, I check Twitter during the trailers. I have no interest in trailers. One drawback is that I am sometimes not aware of upcoming movies. I became aware of Booksmart because Lisa Kudrow was on WTF with Mark Marin. They mentioned the movie in passing, even though that's what she was promoting. 
But because I am friends with a lot of smart people, many of my friends were raving about the movie online, Instagram stories, Twitter, and other social medias. One night, I was hanging out for the first time in a long time with my high school friends. We were all at the same bar. We each bought rounds of the cheapest beer available and talked a lot about music and pop culture, as is usually the case. Almost as an afterthought, a friend and I made plans to watch Booksmart the following morning. Whoever wakes up first calls the other one, we said as we said goodbye. Oftentimes, plans don't go through if made when drinking. Either I woke up first, or he didn't care enough to keep our plans, but I called him the following morning. At the movies, I bought a coffee, and he refused to purchase anything for himself, and then we found our way to our seats. The crowd was older, which I found strange. Though, to be fair, not many youngsters go to the movies at noon on a Sunday. What did you think of the movie? I asked after the movie ended. Yeah, I liked it, he said. I mean, yeah, I said. I mean, yeah. And that's how I felt. It was all right. I didn't relate to it much. My eldest niece often asked me, who did you hang out with in high school? As in, what group did I belong to? But I never gave that much importance. I didn't really care what people thought of me then, and I don't really care now. So belonging was never a priority for me. I didn't care if I was considered cool, and I still don't. If kids in my school went to a party and I wasn't invited, I kinda just didn't care. Therefore, movies that focus on being a teenager and belonging don't ring true to me. I also don't understand coming of age stories when the lead characters are in their teens. Who the fuck figures themselves out at such an early age? I know people in their 80s who still don't know their purpose in life. That's not true, I don't know anyone in their 80s. But here's where the movie lost me. Booksmart seemed to be afraid of its own emotions, at least to me it did. The ending of Superbad has a drunk Michael Cera and a drunk Jonah Hill confess their love for each other. In the scene that made every bro uncomfortable, they say I love you multiple times, they embrace in a hug, and they sleep inches away from each other. Whereas Booksmart might have or might have not had the lead to say I love you to each other. If they did, they might have said it in a love ya kind of way. There's a slight but important distinction in I love you, and then love you, and then love ya. It's just not the same. Michael Sarah and Jonah Hill wake up after a night of drinking, make a few awkward jokes, and they go to the mall. At the mall, they bump into the girls they've been after the whole movie. They won't be going to the same college. Once summer is over, they won't be inseparable anymore, and they know it. But because they truly love one another, they are capable of accepting that the next stage of their lives won't be together. They can see that in order for them to mature, they have to go at it alone. And so, they go their separate ways, each with their girl, heading to their new destination, an escalator between them. And just before the movie ends, they both look back and share one last glance. Perhaps Superbad was a bit of an omen. When Kevin and I left the theater, we didn't think much of it. We both liked the movie, but we didn't think it had much to do with our lives. We were, after all, heading the same way. Little did we know that once summer was over, we wouldn't be inseparable anymore. Once a metaphorical escalator appeared between us, we knew it was time to go our separate ways. But if it makes you feel any better, know that we both look back to share one last glance. Two stars. Rewatch, doubtful. Unless I show it to my nieces, but honestly, I'd rather show them Lady Bird.